scripture reading this morning is a familiar passage to many from the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. And I'll be reading it in English and then Ken Sensei will read it in Nihongo. John 14, verse 1 to 4. Jesus is speaking here. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Ken. もしなかったならば、私はそう言っておいたであろう。あなた方のために場所を用意していくのだから。そして行って場所の用意ができたならば、また来てあなた方は私のところに迎えよう。私のおるところにあなた方をおらせるためである。私がどこへ行くのか、
イエス様が水の上をお歩きになるのを見また嵐を沈め五千人の群衆に食事を与え死者をよみがえらせになったのを直接に見ることができました And they had spent those years listening to the greatest teachings ever heard. Then, further, they were excited. They were excited because they expected that Jesus would literally overthrow the Roman government and set up his own kingdom right there in Jerusalem. And they, well, they were right inside the middle of that movement. Now, I'm not saying everything was perfect for them, but life was really going pretty well for them at that point. They had no reason to expect that in a very short time, in the very near future, all of their expectations and all of their hopes would simply fall apart. But Jesus knew. He knew what was about to take place. And he wanted to prepare them for what was going to happen. So he explained to them what was ahead for them. And he wanted them to really understand this time what he was saying, so he spoke very clearly to them. To better prepare them for what was about to happen. Now, most of us get pretty concerned when we know that hard times are ahead. However, by examining Jesus' words to his disciples, we can learn better how to get through those tough times. So Jesus sets out to encourage his disciples. Notice the first thing he said to them was, You trust in God, now trust in me. Now, this is really important because this is the foundation of finding peace to get it through any tough times. And all of the things he said to them and would say to them were built on this statement. Trust in him. Trust in him. You know, when you have to counsel someone who's having a tough time, can't think what else to say. Just say, trust in Him. He then went on to explain some of the reasons and ways they could trust in him. But he never really moved away from that. He never moved beyond trust as the thing that would really get them through. しかしそうされるうちでもイエス様を信じる
You know, trust and faith are really similar words. Sometimes they're even treated as synonyms. But really, they're very, very different. Faith is what calms a raging storm. But you know what is better than faith? Greater than faith? What I find more spectacular than faith, than Jesus calming the storm, was his trust in God the Father that allowed him to sleep peacefully while the storm raged. Faith is knowing that God can change things. Trust is knowing that God will do what's best. Let me repeat that. Two sentences. Amen. <laughs> faith is knowing that God can change things. That's faith. Trust is knowing that God will do what's best. You see the difference? It's important. It's trust that keeps you going until the miracle comes. But you know, Jesus didn't just give his disciples some theory on trusting. He gave them more to go on. He explained more to them so they would see the reasons why they could trust him. And from Jesus' comments to them, we can gather some truths that will help us put our trust in God in uncertain and troubled times. Now, when the Roman soldiers came to arrest Jesus, it would have been easy for the disciples to forget that God was in control. And don't forget the idea of the Messiah, their idea of the Messiah, their idea, was that he would overthrow the Roman government and set up his kingdom. So the death of their Messiah wouldn't fit into their plan. But Jesus explained that it was all, all of it was part of God's plan. In fact, it was only by his death and resurrection that they could even get to heaven in the first place. 
イエス様の死と復活によってのみ弟子たちは自分たちが天国に入れるようにされるのだということが説明されたのです。You know, many times in our lives, each of our individual lives, situations may seem hopeless. しばしば私たちの生活における状況は絶望的に見えるものです。But you can trust in God because He assures you there's a reason for it. He didn't send the trials your way. But He didn't stop them either because He plans to do something. Really great through those trials. Did you hear what I said? He plans to do something really great through those trials you're going through. If you let him. So the first way Jesus reassured his disciples was by telling them that they could trust in him. The second way Jesus reassured his disciples was his promise that their crisis would not last forever. He said, Yes, I'm going away, but I'll be back. The fact is that God promises that whatever trials you or I go through, they will not last forever. Now, Jesus knew. He knew that his disciples couldn't survive the hard times. That were ahead forever. But he was able to promise them that while there would be storms ahead, there would be sunshine on the other side. This morning, I don't know all of your situations, but I know this. Jesus promises you that your trials will not last forever. Amen. You may not see any hope. You may not see any hope at all, but you can trust God's word. You know, sometimes a friend, you have a problem, and the friend will say to you something like, Oh, it'll, it'll be okay. Don't worry about it. That doesn't help very much. Because you know that friend, and you know that friend has troubles, and she worries about it, or he worries about it. <laughs> But you can trust God's word. And He says He will provide a way for you.
But having said that, let me say also that our ultimate victory, our ultimate victory is only going to come when he returns like he promised. He'll take us out of the grip of this world and its troubles forever. And there's two ways he'll return. Either return for the church and take us all with him to heaven, or he'll return for each one of us individually. At that time we breathe our last breath. He'll be there. But he does promise he'll take us out of the grip that this world has upon us and its troubles. He'll take us out forever. So the second way Jesus comforted his disciples was by promising them and that their crisis would not last forever. Then the third way that Jesus further reassured them and comforted them was with this statement. You know how to get there. Now the disciples, they didn't think that they knew their way out of their troubles. But notice how Jesus answered that. He said, he explained that they knew him and he was the way. What does that mean? It means this, that any trouble, any trial you have or going through, He's the way through it. There is no other way. He assured them that He would be sufficient for them. He would be all they needed. So many times when we're in a storm, it seems that something's missing. There's something we need to get out of the storm. But Jesus said, You have everything you need as long as you know me. I'd like to briefly mention here that he's not talking about knowing about him. He's talking about knowing him with a personal and intimate knowledge. Listen to me now. You know it's only through a personal, intimate relationship with him, Jesus that you'll get through the hard times. It's not enough to know about him 
You have to have a personal, intimate relationship with Him. If your Christian life is just a ritual for you, something you're doing out of a sense of duty, then you're not going to have what you need. It won't give you what you need in the hard times. But if your Christian life is for you a very real friendship with the Lord Jesus, then that relationship will get you through. So Jesus comforted his disciples by reminding them he was the way out of their crisis. Then there's the final assurance that I think is the greatest and most powerful that Jesus was about to leave with his disciples. Now, they had known his presence for three and a half years. Now there would be no more presence. But you know, Jesus hadn't spent those three and a half years ministering to them just to now throw them to the wolves and hope, and hope they'd survive. Now. Instead, he promised, he promised that he would send another one to help them through those times. Listen to his words. I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper, that He may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of Truth. And Jesus promised them that though He Himself had to go, he would send the Holy Spirit to them. And that was good. Because listen, the Holy Spirit wouldn't be limited to time and space like Jesus was. <clears throat> Imagine if Jesus was still here, but not the Holy Spirit. We would have to wait until his calendar was clear to see him. But now we have the presence of God everywhere at once in the person of the Holy Spirit. And this was made possible by Jesus leaving this earth. One of the last things that Jesus said to his disciples before he left the earth was the Great Commission. And right at the end of that commission, Jesus said this, I am with you always until the end of the age. 
、私は世の終わりまでいつもあなた方と共にいる。That's puzzling because shortly after this, Jesus ascended to heaven. And there may have been some question in the minds of the、uh, disciples or in your mind. Didn't he say he'd never leave us? And now he's leaving us. But the fact is that right after he left, that the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit, who is also called, remember this, the Holy Spirit is also called. The Spirit of Christ. Ah, so. <laughs> so the presence of Christ is no longer limited by space and time. The Spirit of Christ is still very present on this earth and very present in your life. There may be times when the going gets rough and you're tempted to think you're all alone. Next time that happens, just remember Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Whatever your circumstances, whatever your circumstances, you can be content because God has promised He will never leave you. You've got to understand you don't face those problems of life all by yourself. Instead, He walks right alongside of you. King David went some, through some terrible times being chased by Saul. And, I, and I'm sure there must have been times when he felt like he was all alone. And yet, look what he wrote in the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. No matter what you're going through, you will not be alone. God will walk right beside you. We can trust in Him to get us through the hard times. Trust that He's in control. Trust that our trial won't last forever. Trust that we have all we need to get through. And trust He'll never leave us. Jesus said, I leave you, peace I leave you, peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He left you 
every one of us a gift. And that gift that he asks us to accept is peace of mind and heart. And that peace that he gave you, that he gave me, isn't like the peace that the world gives. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. Troubles will come. Trials will come. Bigger ones than you have today, maybe. But he'll always be there. Talk to him about it. Thanks for being with me, Jesus. I really needed you at this moment. Yes, in times like these, we need a Savior. In troubled times like these, we need a Savior. There's a hymn that reminds us of that. Number 527 in your hymn book. Just stay seated. First, the chorus is a little different. It says, I am very sure. Let's sing the chorus one more time. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. Yes. This rock is Jesus, the only one, I'm very sure, I'm very sure, I'm very sure, my anchor holds, it grips on the solid rock, hallelujah, Father God we thank you that in troubled times, in troubled times in a troubled world, we have an anchor that holds. His name is Jesus. We thank you that he's present with us in those times. And Father, if I should forget at any time, remind me, remind me that I have you with me, walking beside me through every trouble, through every trial. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.